up, Mad Crab family, and welcome to another episode of Mukbang Mondays. Today, I have with me Brody Love, or should I say, Comedian Brody Love. Comedian Brody Love. All right, so we're going to say our grace, we're going to let you guys know what we're eating for the day, and we're going to get this party started. So we usually give the guests okay, the pleasure of saying our grace for us, so would you like to bless the food for us? Today we have some lemon pepper fried lemon pepper shrimp. We also have a couple of fried lobster tails. Mmm, I can taste them already. We have some snow crabs today. We also have a few uh, steamed shrimp with the mad crab savory sauce on it. And a little birdie told me that this is your first time eating seafood, so I decided to make you some uh, some wings, and that wing, those wings right there are uh, a special house sauce that we make. Awesome, they look good. Everything looks good. Everything Delicious. looks good? Okay, so hopefully it looks as good as it tastes. Yes. I mean, it tastes as good as it looks. Yes. All right. Okay, so we're going to take a couple of bites, and there's so much stuff that I want to ask you, so we're going to take a couple of bites, and then we're going to get started. All right. So you never had crab before, right? No. Okay, so you willing to... The dive in? Yes. Okay, so just grab one of the, the, the legs. Okay, so you're going to just, you nice, know. So nice and warm. Yeah, yeah, it's good. So pop it, pop off the, the leg. Uh -huh. So I want you to try one of these first since you're an amateur. You think you need a bill? No, I'm good. Oh, okay. I want you to pop me in the shirt. Oh, okay. Pop me in the love? Okay. Right. Okay. All right. Okay, I want you to try one of these legs. This is a little bit easier for you to handle. One of these. This. One of these. Okay. Pop one of these off. And eating crabs is a bit messy, so, you know, your hands going to be all, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. So you're going to take the, the middle of the, the crab like this, and you're going to barely crack it to a crack till you hear a pop, just like that. Okay. And then you're going to do the same thing to the other side. And if I cook them right, the meat is just going to pop out, just like that. Well, I'm not a professional at this, but my meat didn't pop out. Okay, well, you know what? I'm so I'm so nice. Okay. I'll yeah. give you mine. Well, thank you. Oh, so you and, and this is the part to eat. That's the part to eat. So you can't just put this in your mouth, crack it with your teeth, and then Negative. You got to eat. Okay. Negative. You got to eat the meat. So we're just going to dip it in the butter sauce. Okay. And, mmm. You like? Yeah, that's pretty good. Not so bad, right? No, not bad at all. See? First time for everything. Man. And you had your first experience at Mad Crab Seafood and Wings. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's really good. Mm -hmm. And you can wash it down with some, some lemonade. I need to get the rest of the meat out. So for those of us who don't know who you are, give us a little backstory. Tell us tell us about tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm caught reading Brody Love. And uh, the reason why I'm a cop medium is because I am a cop and a comedian. So I put it all together, cop medium. You know, I don't think you ever heard of a cop medium, right? Never. Exactly. So I'm doing both both jobs that I love both of them. Okay, but tell us, how do you go from policing to telling jokes? Like, how did that come about? Like, how did, how did that match up? Well, I think the joke started before the police thing. The police thing was something that I always wanted to do growing up, and I got that idea. You know, I always liked the police. I used to see them with the lights and sirens flying down the street. So at that point, I just wanted to be anything with lights. It could have been the Douglas truck man, the, the, the cable company that had the little yellow light. Anybody with lights on it, I wanted to be. <laughs> so uh, then I watched the movie Blue Street. Uh -oh. And when I saw Blue Street with Martin Law, I say, "Oh yeah, that's the, that's me right there." You know what I'm saying? That kind of cop. I want to bring that kind of energy to the police force. You know, it, it had been heard of, but yeah, I think I did pretty well. Okay, that sounds very interesting. So, was there a, a point in time where you first knew you were funny, like where people were saying, "Hey man, you should be," or 
you know, at any point in time? Like, when did you know, like, you were funny? Well, I think growing up, um, it's just natural stuff, being funny at family reunions, around family and friends, uh, doing um, a lot of different little talent shows and cracking on each other in school. And that led to just doing it full time, just saying, you know what, I think I want to do this. I remember I was watching TV and I see some of the comedians that was out here making millions of dollars and I would watch some of their specials and I'd be like, man, I can do that, I can do that. And so that's why I say I wanted to get into comedy. Well, who, who are some of your influences? Well, I'm going to go with Martin Lawrence, my number one influence, uh, Jamie Foxx. Uh, that was kind of my era growing up. I used to watch them a lot. And I just like the way they ad libs. They tell a joke. They were more than just one dimensional. Like, you know, they made a facial expression. They told a joke. And they did a little dance move with it. So, you know, you have more than one way to laugh. You might not even laugh at the joke. But then you might laugh at the way I just uh, did a little move, like, with the joke. So, it's different ways of bringing out comedy to uh, for everybody. Yeah, I've seen a couple of comedians that are pretty much, it's not what they say. Is what they're doing when they're saying it. Mm -hmm. So I uh, yeah, definitely. So do you actually write your own jokes? Like how do you come up with how do you come up with material? I write my own jokes, but they uh they real life. You know, when you look at what's going around you, how many times you laugh a day? You know, when you just going about your every day, how many times you laugh? You just be riding, you you might laugh three or four four times within an hour. And so sometimes you just take real life and bring it to the stage. Have you ever had fried lobster before? No. I want you to give fried me a chicken. Fried chicken. Fried lobster. No. Okay, well I want you to try a little piece of that fried lobster. Okay. And I like to dip mine yeah. in the mat uh, in the um shotgun sauce that we make. It's like a shebang sauce that okay. we make in-house. So, so that's how the meat. do you how do you take Just this one out? Pull the meat on out. Okay, just like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so you can either dip it in your butter sauce or you can dip it in the shebang sauce. Let's try this one first. Mm, you know what it is? You know what it is? You know what it is? This fried lobster? Fried lobster. Man, I don't even know what this do. Like, what this do? This Man, you know how feel, you know how good it feels to be your first? No, listen. It, this feels better than a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> listen. Where do you find this at? Like, I, I, I don't know nothing about seafood. I'm telling you, I didn't grow up around it. Mama has to eat vegetarian food. We do not eat none of this stuff. Matter of fact, um, when it's air, let me know so I can she not see this because she might be disappointed. <laughs> it's, worth it. it's worth it though. It's worth it. Well, this is good, man. Seafood is a family favorite of ours. Mm. So we just try little different things and play around in the kitchen. Mm. And we come up with. No, I'm serious, man. We might take the time out. Go. <laughs> I ain't know this on time up, folks. You might have to go to commercial break. Can you, can you get a couple more in? <laughs> well, I'll let you. Uh, now, this is good. We got two of them, so. Okay, let me have it. Let you have it? Mm hmm. Okay. I'm gonna take my home. <laughs> so, um, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. When you're telling a joke mm -hmm. and people don't laugh, what you do? Like, you know, what, what happens? Well, Chug joke, and people don't laugh. They get nerve wracking a little bit. You know, for me. Because when, when I do my comedy, I like the people to laugh. That let me know I'm getting to my audience. So that's like somebody eating your food and just sitting there eating it and looking blank and not even like saying, oh, this was good. This was, you don't know what you did, what, what you did, you know? So if I tell a joke and they don't laugh, I get right to the next one. Let's go. Let's get to the next one. But yeah, but I have I have thought of before. No, it don't feel good. So you recover, you just don't give up. No, you can't give up. You right. gotta keep going. I hear a lot of people say, you know, just keep going and don't give up because of, you know you can have the same material. Mm -hmm. You can say the same thing to a different crowd in a different area and and win the crowd over. Yes. It's like when I first started coming, um, some nights I would go out 
and I would feel like, man, I feel, man, I'm like, Kevin Hart better watch out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I'm on, I'm on ass. You know what I'm saying? I'm on ass. And then the next night, I'll be inviting, like, you know, I invite a lot of people. I'm like, oh, I'm going to smash, like, last night. And then after the show, they'd be like, oh, I mean, you got to keep going. Like, you did good. <laughs> just, you know, <laughs> you know, just keep doing what you, you love this. Don't give up. That kind of thing, so that's embarrassing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I am posting on Facebook like I kill, you know what I'm saying? And then the next night, I feel like, you know, I, I, don't, I don't even know why I'm telling jokes. Like, I got another job, you know? I got another job. I'm, I'm really a police. I should be taking people to jail. I shouldn't even be telling, you know, jokes. <laughs> that's how I feel sometimes. So when do you think you got your first big break in comedy? Um, I think my first big break in comedy was um, they had this uh, this competition in New York for the Sway in the Morning show. And <laughs> Sway in the Morning was looking for top 10 comedians that they picked. And uh, somebody, one of my friends called me and was like, man, you need to put your stuff on Sway, man. I'm telling you, you got to get your stuff on Sway. And I was like, Sway? Sway in the Morning? Man, people ain't going to. So I sent it in. And then it was crazy because I got a phone call and it was like, hey, this is the producer for the Sway in the Morning Show. We all rolling at your material that you sent in. We want to meet you. You want to come on the Sway in the Morning Show. I was like, wow. That's like, Sway, Sway? Like, how Sway? Like, that's crazy. So uh, I made arrangements, you know. Um, didn't pay my rent, so I could fly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I was balling in. Hoping you, know? you weren't going to be homeless if you got that, right? Exactly, right? right? So then I get down to New York, I meet Sway, I do my material in front of Sway, the staff, you know. Um, was, were there any like um, celebrity comedians on the panel? Oh yeah, everybody. Uh, that's why I met D. Ray Davis, mm -hmm. the Wayne Brothers. Um, it was a lot of other people like rappers and stuff like they all was there, all like celebrities that were there watching. So I was real nervous. I'm like, man. Even from the, you know, what if they don't like me, you know, but they love me. They love me. They, they, and we had a good conversation too out of that. So did you, uh, do you, do you, have you ever had the opportunity of working with any famous comedians? Yeah, of course. Um, after that, um, I was able to stay there. I opened up for D-Ray Davis. They liked my set so much. They let me stay down there and open up for D-Ray Davis. Uh, got back home, you know, people started shooting me. Facebook messages and stuff, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, I felt like Mike Jones. Back then, y'all did wrong. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm hot. <laughs> yeah, y'all got to still buy tickets. Y'all got to still buy, <laughs> buy some tickets. I'm trying to make it. But yeah, open up for different people. Lunell, uh, Country Wayne. I mean, you, you name it. They were coming in. I was opening up for them. Dion Cole, Big Shot Dion Cole, too. You know, he, he really liked my set, too. He took me a couple places, you know, and then... Um, that's how it was. I started meeting bigger and bigger people, bigger names. So, uh, I'm a fan. So, I follow you. Okay. And I noticed that you were on the road mm -hmm. with uh, Michael Black. Yes. So, how did you, how did you come, like, how did <laughs> that opportunity come? Yeah, so, Michael Black is my man. I'm currently on tour with him, signed to uh, Black Entertainment. Black is, 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 I mean, he's, He's the African king of comedy. So our comedy kind of was unique because nobody ever seen an African comedian. So that's why he had created his own lane so he can call himself the king of comedy. So when he told me about my set, he was like, man, wait, you a real cop? I said, yes, sir. He was like, man, that's crazy. I ain't never seen nobody doing that. So now you creating a whole new wave of, of type of comedy that you bring to people that they're not used to hearing. You know what I'm saying? You always get to hear about stuff about the police and how they pulled you over. But you don't get to hear about how we be feeling when we pull y'all over or get into situations and stuff like that on um, our, our um, what's going through our minds. So when you, when you get an audience that, I mean, it, it's a great night of laughter. So, but uh, yeah, Michael Blackson, he told me when he came to me after the show, he said, uh, he said, uh, you still the police? I said, yes, sir, still is. And he was like, like, how much you make? I said, well, I don't really want to talk about it. He said, okay, I'll put it this way. You want to be a broke nigga or you want to be a rich nigga? I said, I want to be rich. He said, well, you work for me now. And that's how it was. And, you know, he took me all over the place. I've been everywhere with Mike. 
That's so. awesome. That's awesome. That's a wonderful experience too, because a lot of people don't get the opportunity to to get a break like that. So that's that's something great. Who is comedian Brody Love? Like, who? What? What is he like? Brody Love is cool. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like your favorite cop. Like, you know how you see all the stuff on on Facebook and internet about cops and how they act, interact with people. You would love for me to pull you over. You know what I'm saying? Like, I pulled this one lady over. And I told her, man, I'm gonna speed. And then she was like, I'm, she was like, I'm sorry, I, I can't afford no tickets and this and that. So I was like, well, I came back to the car. She said, ma'am, real serious face. I said, um, I'm giving you two tickets. And she was like, oh, I just saw her go out like all her, you know, energy and everything. Just like, man, how you gonna give me two tickets? And I was like, I'm giving you two tickets to see me at this Saturday at the Improv Comedy Club. And she was like, you for real? Oh my God, for real? And then she was the loudest at the club. She made sure she showed love. She was like, he pulled me over, he cool as fuck and all that. I was like, see, that's what I'm talking about. So I was able to brighten up her day. And uh, see, she had a different perspective. She told me after the show, she was like, you know what? I used to hate cops. Because every time I get pulled over, they were so nasty, they were rude. But seeing you just gave me a whole new perspective on police in general. Like, and not all police are the same. Don't, don't, you know, don't be requesting me at traffic stops and stuff like that. So, <laughs> but I'm just saying, cause some, um, you know, some um, kind of, you know, they're just gonna be doing their job straightforward. But I feel like you don't have to be, uh, you know, you don't have to be mean to like people. You just do your job, be professional, be courteous to people. You never know. You may need to help that person help one day. You never know how they can affect your career too as well. Definitely. Mm-hmm. And that's good to hear, especially with things going on in the world today with police brutality, the Black Lives Matter, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement. So to hear uh, a positive, you know, to hear something positive from the police, that's actually uh, oh, a great my mama know I call her back. She just want to check on me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, I, I have to use a lot of training and experience and I want to help these people um, find justice for their loved ones. So that's the most challenging part is to save, you know, saving lives and bringing justice to people, you know, uh, letting the family know that we're going to do everything we can to, you know, catch these people and not just let them go and keep hurting and keep coming out into the community so it can be a lot safer for us. 
So I know we just touched on this a little bit, but um, you know, there's a lot of misconception about police officers. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I know that you can only speak from your experience as a police officer uh, when you were working the role and now as detective. But what are some of the misconceptions that people have and what do you want them to know? Well, the, the biggest thing is that I think that we don't know the law. You know, we don't know. We know half or something, but we don't know the whole law. You know, people, a lot of people say, oh, I know my rights. I know my rights. And then they tell you something. And so when the police hear somebody saying they know their rights, and then they tell you something that lets you know that they don't know your rights, then what that let you know? Oh, I can do anything to them because they come out this. They don't even know. So the education has always been a part of what, um, what I like to do. My family and friends call me. They say, hey, man, can the police do this? Can the police do that? And I'm like, well, wait, tell me the whole story. What's going on? Let me know what's happening so I can give them good advice that'll keep them, you know, safe around the police. And, um, you know, and I also got some cousins, too, that they, they, they out here, you know, doing things and that going to get police attention. And then they want to call, like, they've been in church, you know, all, <laughs> they left church and stuff. And they be like, hey, man, can the police just pull you over and tell me you ain't got no license? I said, but you ain't never had no license. <laughs> so to me, they talk like that, but they don't want to know that. I said, yes, they do. They can see you ain't never had no license. So they just, <laughs> just something. I mean, you drive with no license, you taking a risk. You doing certain things, certain drugs, you going, you taking a risk. So, but um, yeah, I love being a police because I'm able to help people. And then, like I said, and I think comedy and police, people don't believe this though, but I have a good personality and a good career so far. It's because I use my comedy as a police. Because there's a lot of situations I'd be scared as hell. They're like, oh, we got three people shot. They seen at me. My back up 20 minutes away. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I got to go in like acting mode. You know what I'm saying? I'm all in control and everything. People looking at me. Oh, so listen, this guy, they ran that way and went this way. I'm like, calm down. Everything's going to be OK. I got it. I, man, we, we have it under control. And I'm like, like please come on, help, help. Like, I'll find y'all away. Please help. Like, like, hurry up. You know, just, I remember this one lady, it was an accident. It was an accident on the road. And I jumped out of my police car. And I'm like, I'm like, is anybody okay? And the lady was like, she's like, no, I can't feel my legs. I was like, oh, sir, call 911. He was like, Then she slapped the ass. I said, ma'am, your ass gonna have nothing to do with the brake light. 
get back in the car. Yeah, I gave her a ticket for having a seatbelt through the titties. <laughs> Cause you know women do that. Like, why you got the seatbelt through the titties? Like, don't do that. You oh want me my to see. god! They go around, man. I'm not through. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Listen. So you done told us who? You told us who? Comedian, bro. Well, comedian Brody Love mm-hmm. is like. Tell us who detect, what Detective Project Lampkin is, is like. Yeah, this is boring my style, man. So, Detective Project Lampkin is, is like the serious side of me. You know, because I can't play all the time. If I could play all the time, I would love to do that, but I, I gotta be serious sometimes. And also, um, you know, with, that's, Detective Project Lampkin is the, the, the father you know, for my girls, you know, that's that's the way I make. Matter of fact, he actually is the manager of Brody Love. So I, I play these like these little two personalities. Comedian Brody Love is the, you know, the performer, the talent, you know, go out, make people laugh, have a good time. And then Detective is more like the overseer, the manager, like say, hey man, you know, we can't go do this, we gotta do that. Oh, you got a show tonight, you got this and kind of keep thing organized or at work. That stuff keeps me focused, you know, hey, I got I saw all these cases. I saw all these three cases that I can go on the road for a whole week and tour with Michael Blackson or whoever and make people laugh for a week, you know. So I'm saving lives on this end and then through laughter and comedy, I'm saving lives too because people love me. Laughter and they should. Absolutely. Uh, that's what, you know, you never know who. I learned this a long time ago when I was working for another, when I was working for a company and I was a trainer. And you never know what kind of day somebody's having. You never know what's on the other end. Like when you pull somebody over, you don't know if they've just got a phone call that someone's had a death, something's happened to a child, and they just trying to get there. You just don't know. And you're the first line of fire when you pull them over or when you have contact, when you make contact with those people. So you kind of have to treat every situation, you know, uh, with a smile because you just never know what that person is going through and maybe that's all that they need. So it's definitely good to have police officers like yourself out there because there are some police officers, you know, that, you know, all police, you know, my, my thing is, you know, some people judge just by group. You know, one police officer did something, it's like, we hate the police. Yeah. But everyone is not the same. So I'm definitely glad I had the opportunity to sit with you so that you can let the people know that there are some good guys out there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I do want to ask you before we wrap it up, a couple more questions I wanted to ask you. Have you ever done a show and like seen somebody in the crowd that you pulled over or, mm-hmm. or had to arrest or something? And what was that like? Like what what is that experience like? Like how did it well, um, I have. I've actually, you know, been places and people come like, man, you remember you took me to the house? Like, <laughs> <laughs> they finna help or they finna do something crazy, but they actually enjoy themselves. They were like, man, you know, I know I was doing wrong. They came right. But that's all about respect and how you treat people. Because had I been nasty to that guy and not make him, you know, feel like I was just doing my job, he would have wanted to come up there and act silly on my other job. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, I think the difference is that, see, I'm in the community. You got police officers that go, they live three counties away, they drive all these counties to get to work and be really mean to people. But when you live in the community, I be at the grocery store, I run into people out of the restaurant, I run into people out of help, I run into everybody. They see me around, they see me in the community, so they know that, oh man, Lamp, you know, he do his job, but he cool. Brody, man, I saw him in the show, man. I was trying to boo him, but he was just funny, like, you know, so, and I know you know, because you've been to shows, too, and seen people who, I had, I said, oh, look, this person, I took this, and then they end up having a great time, and they'll come up and say, hey, man, thanks, you know, for all you do, this is cool, you know, and, and that's what I enjoy. That's yeah, I enjoy. some people just can't see past the uniform, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So sometimes just that uniform makes it you know, hard for people to accept the fact that you are a person outside of that uniform when that uniform comes off. But some people don't get the opportunity to to meet that person. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, if they wanted to be able to follow you, to be able to know what shows you have going on, like 
how would that how would how would we be able to do that? Well, just go to my website, GloryLove.com. It has all my social media on there, all my pages, and that's how people buy, post all my shows when I'm gonna be at and I'm on tour in different states, different places, it's all on the uh, social media at GloryLove.com and everything's on there. Awesome, and I'll make sure that it's in the description below. So if you guys missed that, we'll make sure to put all Caught Media and Brody Love's information in the description below. Because mm -hmm. if you don't follow me, I'm gonna follow you. <laughs> yeah. Good. Well, man, it was it was definitely a pleasure. Man, you know. Wait, now that this is ended. Do we still get eat all? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna finish this off camera, man. You didn't even try the lemonade. The li oh, you know what? I'm gonna try it now. Okay, well let's. Let the, let, the, let, the, yeah, let the people let out see, there yeah, know. Let's see what this is yeah. like. Cause, you know, see how good this is. We didn't even mention I was so enjoying that food. The lobster tail, fried lobster. Man, that's a hit. But you know what? We also, I we don't you, just we don't just do. Oh, you think you mixed chicken in there. You think so? Yeah, that was, I ain't, no, I ain't, I ain't mixed no chicken in there. Yeah, that's, that's but uh, we, we don't just sell seafood and wings now. Oh, you know what? I keep hearing about this steak, right? So I had to try it. And I don't know who the cook was, but I'm talking about I tried this steak. It was so good. Listen, I travel all around the world. I have never tasted a steak. And I'm kind of disappointed. The steak ain't up here today. Yeah, Pops one here today, man. Pops want to make that steak. Boy. Yeah, that steak. I'm telling you, listen to me, people. Listen to me. If you ever in town, you need to come try that steak. That steak's so good. I'm telling you, man. It's some stuff that I just like. I have to make decisions. <laughs> decisions. But the mad crowd, y'all come here to steak and the seafood. This is my first time trying seafood. It's delicious. But I know that steak. That steak does something to me. So good. Make you want to slap. Oh, I don't <laughs> even cook. But yeah. Anyway, try the steak, people. It's good. Right. I just want to close up because you know I like to let the people know how serious I was about the steak. Can we spend the night here? This Did you bring your spin the night bag? <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> this is too good. The food, the drink, I mean everything I touched was golden today. Great. This is great food, great business. I'm telling you, everywhere I go, I'm telling them they gotta come check out the mad crap. I appreciate that. Man. I need to be in every state. Now before we leave. Y'all know I like to leave y'all with a mad crowd motivational moment. And today I just want to let you know, do not be deterred because there will be distractions and route to your destination. Yeah, like that, like that what you eat. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. There will be distractions and route to your destination, but don't you dare give up. Until next time. See you guys later.